Bamboo Lab would like you to purchase an AMS2 Pro to add filament drying to your previous generation XP or A series printer. But instead, how about we test a kit from EBOS that modifies the original AMS to add filament drying and does so in an intelligent way that offers improvements over what you can buy from Bamboo Lab. We're starting to see more and more upgraded and modification kits for Bamboo Lab hardware. And for those that don't want to spend the money on the new flagship H2D, that's a really good thing. In this video, we're testing a product that's an example of this, the Series X Tetris from EBOS. It's a reversible upgrade kit for your original AMS, so let's compare the performance between the two. Let's start by explaining the context behind this product. And it starts with the launch of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And although the feature that probably got the most attention back then was the micro lidar, it was the AMS or automatic material system that's been the most impactful. This provided sealed storage on top of the printer, very convenient, with the filament automatically being fed into the hot end. And of course, the filament could be changed automatically mid-print, allowing for convenient multi-material and multi-color 3D printing, with the caveat being that there was still a single hot end, so the old filament needed to be pushed and purged through, wasting a fair bit of time and filament on these types of prints. Fast forward to the recent release of the Bamboo Lab H2D, and the main new feature is a dual switching hot end. For one and two color prints at least, this massively improved efficiency and minimized wastage. Although for three or more filaments in a print, the purge problem was still evident. The launch of the H2D also brought with it the launch of the AMS2 Pro. And although externally it looks pretty much the same as the old one, it does have one important new feature and that is built-in filament drying, meaning it's not only a dry box that's convenient for feeding in your filament, but in between prints, you can program it to actively heat up and dry the filament, keeping it in tip-top condition for best results. So here's the thing, X1 and P1 owners do have upgrades available for their machines, but they won't be able to upgrade to the H2D's new dual extruder. But Bamboo Lab would like them to upgrade to the new AMS Pro, as it's been made backwards compatible with A1 and P1 printers, with compatibility for the A1 printers in the future as well. So the price of doing this is going to be 300 US dollars, but it means your old AMS is no longer going to be needed and that's quite wasteful. So what if there was a kit that would convert your existing AMS1 to have filament drying capabilities and even add some perks over the AMS2 Pro? Well, that's exactly what we're testing today with the EBOS Filament Dryer Series X Tetris. We're going to compare it versus an AMS2 Pro as an upgrade over an AMS1 for filament drying. This kit was received free of charge and as always has been tested in accordance with my review policy. That means full transparency and credit and criticism were due. The first thing we'll compare is price with the Bamboo Lab AMS2 Pro coming in at 300 US dollars. But for those upgrading from X1, P1 and eventually A1, you will also need a switching adapter on top of this to power it and this particular part comes in at an additional 33 US dollars. The Tetris filament dryer by comparison is $100 less with a regular price of 200 US dollars. That's for the deluxe version, which splits the chamber into four individual sections with individual heaters. But if you're looking to save some money, you can get the two chamber version, which lowers the regular price to 140 US dollars. So on our first point of comparison, purchase price, the EBOS X Tetris has a comfortable edge. However, when we look at whether assembly is required, the AMS2 Pro is definitely the more convenient option. After removing it from the box, we have some superficial removing of protective plastic, followed by the insertion of desiccate packs into the back of the AMS2. To connect it to the machine, we simply insert the PTFE tube, followed by the data and power cable, and we're ready to go. The kit from EBOS is an entirely different proposition, because it is just that, a kit. Inside the box we have many small parts, screws, and even a tool to help us with assembly, and this assembly is not particularly hard, but it will take up some time, compared to an AMS2. To assist us with this, we have a printed manual that goes through everything step by step, and they've gone for the IKEA style instructions, where there's no text to explain each step, only color coding and arrows. Overall, this was pretty good, but in my opinion, some steps needed additional annotation. And thankfully, this feedback has already been taken on board with an updated version, adding more arrows and color coding. To summarize the process, there's four screws that need to be removed to be able to separate the factory bamboo lab lid. 
before the new lid with the built-in dryers goes in its place and is secured to the main body of the AMS using the same screws. From here, we have the addition of some smaller parts, cleverly using self-tapping screws into existing holes in the underside of the AMS, followed by some cable management, and fortunately, all of these cables and ports are labeled nicely, and the installation of feet that also house the power distribution and the display and controls at the front. We finish with the addition of some sticky rubber feet and some smaller internal parts that both divide the chamber into four as well as shielding and protecting the sections that house the AMS motors. I'd say most people would complete this process in comfortably under one hour. While handling the kit, I noticed that the glue had split on the edge of the lid on one side, but this didn't seem to negatively impact performance. And the only other thing I'm not crazy about is that the factory little arms are used to hold the lid shut, but they're flexing up pretty hard and they look like they're holding on for dear life. So far so good, but time will tell if this junction will last. Now there's nothing on this that interfaces with the printer, which means you can operate it completely independently, even on a bench away from the machine. But for most people, they'll complete their installation by putting it on or near their printer and connecting the PTFE tube and AMS plug at the back. So what about the use of external power cords for the heating? An AMS2 Pro, when paired with H2D, doesn't need any additional cables, even for heating and drying. But if you're adding an AMS2 Pro to a P, X or A series printer, you're going to need an additional power point so you can plug in the power adapter. The EBOS kit is exactly the same, so there's no difference in convenience between the two options here. So let's move on to operation and the display of data on the front. Bamboo Lab recently released the AMS HT, which has a permanent display of relative humidity, temperature and drying time. And I think they missed an opportunity with the AMS2 Pro by omitting all of this information and relying on the touchscreen to display it instead. So in my opinion, it's a clear win here for the Tetris, which during drying displays humidity, temperature, drying time and fan speed, or simply the relative humidity if you have it in humidity mode, more on this later. Maybe you're different, but personally, I like to be able to see this information from across the room, so the Tetris has the advantage here. But on variable drying settings, the two are a pretty good match with a range of presets and the option to customize further. Compared to the simplest solution of using a dehydrator with a thermostat and an on-off switch, both of these options have presets for different filaments, and even after you've selected this, you can still alter the temperature and duration. The Tetris is actually more customizable than this, as it has built-in filament presets for four filaments, that's PLA, PTG, ABS, and TPU, but it also has two programmable user presets, and for any of these, we can hold down on the gear button and then cycle through and change the various settings, such as the temperature, the duration, the fan speed, and the target relative humidity, with the exact operation explained in the printed manual. Onto a strength of both of these options, and that's active vents and filament rotation. Venting is something sorely overlooked in a range of standalone filament dryers. Many of them have a manual opening in the top to allow moisture to escape, but I found this ineffective because after the heating is finished, any moisture in the air inside will condense onto the surfaces and need wiping out with a sponge or paper towel. It kind of defeats the purpose of drying. The AMS2 Pro has this vent at the back that will open and shut automatically throughout the drying process, and for me, it's been very effective at expelling any moisture. The Tetris has these motorized vents at the back of each chamber that again will open and shut to let out moisture automatically, and this has also been effective. Neither of these options in all of my testing have ever had moisture condensed back on the inside. As for rotating the spool for more even drying on paper at least, the AMS2 Pro has an option to enable this before you start the cycle. Every few minutes, the spool will be rotated around 15 degrees and this will continue throughout the duration of the cycle. The Tetris, however, has its heating independent of the printer, which means it can't control the motors that turn the filament inside the AMS. So on paper, that means it can't do filament rotation, but actually there is a way to get it done. And that's because, unlike with the AMS2 Pro, the Tetris can dry filament even while you're 3D printing. The AMS2 Pro will not even start its drying cycle until you've disconnected all of the filament. That means unloading it from the mouth of the AMS and tucking in the loose end on the side of the spool. This is what enables the rotation while drying, but I have to say I find this preparation a bit of a chore. Now the Tetris, again, is completely independent of the Bamboo Lab printer and the AMS. That means you can run it while a print is underway, and this will naturally rotate the spool as the filament is fed in. 
Furthermore, there's a filament drying mode too, which lowers the temperature slightly to stop the filament from getting too soft and jamming up the AMS mechanism. To test this out, I printed this fidget star with handle linked in the description and didn't encounter any issues. These are amazing to play with and if you want to print one, I'd recommend upping your flow rate by around 5% to ensure that the pieces can't fall through each other and become disconnected. Another advantage the Tetris has over the AMS2 Pro is independent heating and drying chambers. Here you can see I have different kinds of filaments loaded into the AMS2 Pro, but when I go to the drying setting, whatever I pick has to suit all of them. This is probably not the end of the world, but it is worth pointing out on the Tetris that the four chambers and heaters are independent of each other. Here you can see that I have ABS, PETG and two rolls of PLA loaded up and they're all running independently with the correct settings. And this was happening while I was printing with PLA. Because of the independent chambers, you can dry the filament that you're printing with and dry other types at the same time. Our last point of comparison is a feature exclusive to the Tetris, which they call humidity mode. You can think of this like a storage or maintenance mode. Two presses of the power button will switch from active heating to humidity mode, and you can also have it activate automatically after a drying cycle is finished. While in this mode, the humidity readout fluctuated between 10 and around 18%, with a fan for these chambers wearing, and the vents opening and closing by themselves at the rear to regulate humidity. I did do a test where I left everything off and the filament sealed inside the chamber for a couple of days, and found that the relative humidity was mostly in the low 30s and high 20s. However, half an hour later in humidity mode, everything had dropped down to around 10%. So this is an effective storage method. So that's our comparison table complete with some pros and cons for each. And what's important to you will be different for everybody. So hopefully this lets you make an informed decision. So with that in mind, here's a few other considerations to help you decide. To help insulate the existing AMS motors, we have these plastic parts that slot over the top and keep the temperature away. This does encroach around 3mm towards the filament, so if you have some particularly tall and narrow spools, or perhaps one that's not wound on that well, you have slightly more chance of it fouling and rubbing on this part compared to a normal AMS. The next is volume, with the AMS2 Pro winning here, and during a drying cycle, it's in the mid to low 20 decibel range. The Tetris is at least 10 decibels louder. It's not loud overall, but you will notice it. There's also no difference in volume between humidity mode or actual drying mode. Next is physical size, and the Tetris is a lot bigger and bulkier than an AMS2 Pro. The width is the same, but the height and depth are dramatically larger. Having said that, it still fits snugly on top of an X or P series printer. It's worth pointing out that this is a kit that makes no permanent modifications to your original AMS. There's nothing to stop you from reversing all of the assembly to return it to stock if you wanted. And finally, the heaters in the Tetris are limited to 65 degrees, the same as the AMS2 Pro. But Duron, the founder of EBOS, shared with me that they've actually exceeded 120 degrees, which means the system is suitable for annealing parts. Just to be clear, this is not promised in a future update, but I thought it was an interesting aspect to mention. And that's the end of my comparison. I would say there's pros and cons for each, but for the money, this is pretty enticing and I can confirm it works as advertised. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.